The N-word was used so liberally. Who thought this was a good idea? It's humiliating. It could never be me, but y'all do you. Donna Tartt has written some of the most racist books of absolutely all time. One white woman got in trouble because she was watching the, the movies in the theater and she was like using a cucumber and I'm sick of it. So I, I just don't care. These authors are more hyped than pineapple on pizza and I simply do not have the patience for it. There are so many authors out there whose books call to me that I'm interested in, authors that I want to support. And so the authors on this list are just absolutely not it for me, honey. They are thank you next. Y'all could read these authors if you want to. Do what you want to do, celebrate their books, buy their books. I don't give a fuck. There are 12 authors on this list and honestly, it's pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned that there's only 12. It means that out of all of the authors that are putting out amazing books, authors that have been putting out books, authors that are debut, etc. Out of all of those authors, there's only 12 that I can think of where right off bat, I'm like, mm, no, thank you, next. You couldn't pay me to read your book. I wouldn't read your book if it would cure me of all of my trauma. And Lord knows I have a suitcase, car, and a tour bus full of that shit. Let's get started. Coming in at number 12, we have none other than Victoria Foyt. I don't know how long y'all have been around in this community, but if you've been been around since the early 2010s, you will remember that abomination of a story that was called Save the Pearls. It was Save the Pearls. Oh my gosh, this freaking book. This book killed me because I remember seeing it and I was like, yo, something about this does not seem right and I can't figure out what it is. And then I went to Tumblr. Now, this was like when Tumblr was absolutely in its heyday. I know that Tumblr is still a thing, but we can all agree that it's just not what it once was. People on Tumblr were dragging this book. It was one of the most epic legendary draggings I had ever freaking seen. It was shook. I am so surprised that the author did not have bruises from that virtual dragging because Lord. Essentially what Save the Pearls what Save the Pearls is about is it's a fantasy novel that reimagines white people as the oppressed. <laughs> The synopsis for, for this book is my absolute favorite thing. So we have Eden Newman who must mate before her 18th birthday in six months or she'll be left outside to die in a burning world. Who will pick up her mate? Option when she's cursed with white skin and a tragically low mate rate. Not a mate rate, not a meet cute diary of 15% post-apocalyptic totalitarian underground world where class and beauty are defined by resistance to an overheated government environment. Eden's coloring brands her as a member of the lowest class, a weak and ugly pearl. Why are white women so thirsty to be oppressed? I promise you it is not as fun as it sounds. It is not all it's cracked up to be. If only she can mate with a dark-skinned coal from, why are they called coal? Let's start there. Oh my God. From the ruling class, she'll be safe. Just maybe one Cole sees the real Eden and will be her salvation. Her coworker Jamal. I know damn well this bro's name ain't Jamal. I know she did not name him Jamal. She picked up the Negro dictionary and just flipped through the pages and went, I want that one. I know his name is not Jamal. Yup. Jamal. Jamal has begun secretly dating her. Eden unwittingly compromises her father's secret biological experiment, and she finds herself within the eye of the storm, and she's humanity's last hope. What the fuck is this last sentence? Eden must change to survive, but only if she can redefine her ideas of beauty and love, along with a little help from her adopted aunt, Emily Dickinson. That sentence did not end the way that I thought it was gonna end. I know that this came out in 2012, and I'm a personal believer of growth and change and redemption and all of that shit. Like, no lie, no joke, I'm very serious. I think that we all make mistakes, and I hope that Victoria recognizes that this was a mistake. Fetishization of white skinned people being oppressed, that was a mistake. Jamal, that was a mistake. Cole, that was a mistake. All of that, mistake, mistake, mistake. It's been 10 years since this unfortunate piece of a novel was released, and, and I'm pretty sure it's a series. I don't know if she went ahead and released the other books in the series. The Goodreads rating it for, for for the first one is in hell even satan was like no i don't really think this book can be let in we don't have any vacancies we're full all jokes aside i do hope and believe that this author has grown as a person and 10 years later is like yeah i really wish i hadn't written that book that being said i am still not interested in reading your work she could come out 
with like the most bomb.com synopsis ever and I still would not read the book simply because there are just so many authors who haven't put out works like this that, that have done irreparable harm irreparable harm and you can move forward you can forgive you can self-educate and I, I firmly believe in those things and I, I I stand by that I've fucked up I've made mistakes but that being said if some if I make a mistake and someone's like yo I don't want to fuck with you like literally ever again they have that right to do so just like I have the right to be like homegirl made a mistake she's in a better place now but I still don't want to read your work. We're just gonna leave Victoria Foy alone again. And maybe she still rides and dies hard on, on, on this book. It would be embarrassing if that was the hill that she wanted to die on. Do you boo boo. The next author that we have on this list is none other than Danielle Steele. Some of you may be surprised to know that Danielle Steele was like my favorite author as a kid. I was obsessed with her romance books. I thought that I was so special and cool and like adult and unique that I was reading Danielle Steele at like age nine. I read her books. I read her romance books from probably like elementary school, late elementary school until mid early middle school. And I read an embarrassing amount of her fiction. And I did this, I've spoken about this a bit on this channel about how since I was such an avid reader from an early age i just like my reading level was a lot higher than uh, the reading level of many of my peers and so i was really gravitating towards older books even when i was young adult aged young adult literature did not appeal to me now that did not mean that i wasn't reading ya and loving ya but i have always like ever since i was little preferred adult books over ya books it's just always been me the issue was that i thought i was so freaking intelligent for reading daniel Steele and that she was like the cream of the crop and i remember when she hit her status as a billionaire I was so fucking happy for her I was like 14 years old crying over this white woman's success it was just so embarrassing and I'm happy for any author who's able to make money doing what they do it's just so funny that I was riding and dying on Danielle Steele's horse and like why and you couldn't pay me to read one of her books now simply because I don't like romance and I damn sure don't like commercial romance and if I'm going to be reading a romance it's going to be queer, it's going to be BIPOC. Not that I haven't happily enjoyed non-queer, non-BIPOC romances here and there. Honestly, any mass-produced author is probably not one that I'm going to gravitate to, not because it's impossible for their books to be good, but because I try to seek out authors who are not already super, super celebrated. Also because those are the books that just tend to interest me the most anyway so it just makes sense so daniel Steele's on this list when i think back i'm like yo was i even enjoying any of those books was i though next up on this list we have none other than tolkien i have been an avid fantasy reader for my whole life and it's actually really interesting because since starting on booktube i haven't focused on fantasy very much i have never ever been interested in the lord of the rings i have never ever been interested in his work in his literary canon and i know that that just makes a lot of white boy fantasy readers head twist and spin off of their neck white men get so mad when i say that i simply am not interested in tolkien and that i couldn't possibly be a fantasy reader without his work which i find very 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 amusing quite frankly a his books just don't interest me i have four five six seven shelves packed of fantasy books that I'm dying to read that are not Tolkien. Some of them are super hyped and some of them are lesser known authors, upcoming authors, that sort of thing. And they have narratives that are far more appealing to me than this trek for this motherfucking ring. I got your rings right here, bitch. I'm just not interested in his work, especially the racism in it. I just can't do it, y'all. I honestly try to protect myself from racism in literature whenever possible for my own mental health. I'm just not interested in the anti-Black themes in his work and I'm sure that there are other rampant issues with his work as well because like the dude lived nine million years ago. There are going to be enough people riding Tolkien so that I don't have to. There's going to be plenty of people who are going to read his books from now until the end of time and so the fact that I'm not interested in them should not upset you too damn bad. Coming in at number nine on this list we have none other than Jasmine Guillory. I am 
I'm sorry, y'all. I am sorry. I read the wedding date in I think it was 2018 and I was mad excited about it. I feel like the wedding date was the book that really, really made her famous. Comment down below and let me know if I'm wrong, but I feel like after that book, she just skyrocketed. Now she has one to two books coming out every year, I think. And she's such a beloved, celebrated author. She's such a celebrated romance author and I was excited to give her books a try. I was very drawn to the story of a black woman who ends up trapped in an elevator with this handsome white guy. I think the black woman's a lawyer and I think the white dude is a doctor and they kind of plot to go to this wedding together so that she doesn't have to be alone. Or no, 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 he brings her to the wedding because his ex-fiance is gonna be there. And she's like, yo, I need some fun. I need some excitement. I'll go to your damn wedding. And then of course, like antics ensue and they fall in love and they start this long distance relationship. And I was like, okay, like I could get down with this book. This sounds interesting. And everybody was obsessed with it. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll give it a try. And the lie detector test determined that that was a mistake. I know so many of you guys are obsessed with her work and obsessed with this book in particular, but the book was trash. Oh my gosh, Akasha keeps, so I have a big ass dog. Those, are, those of you who've been watching this channel know that my dog is huge and she keeps coming in here and plopping down and shaking the whole camera because she's basically that giant from the sand lot. I read it and I was like, yo, this book is problematic as fuck. This book is so fucking problematic. First of all, consent just didn't exist. O obviously all sex needs consent, right? He would do things like grab her by the neck, slam her up against the wall, that kind of thing without asking for consent. They never had a conversation before or after. And I just did not feel that that was like a healthy standard that we needed to be setting. There needs to be some sort of dialogue about that kind of thing. That is not okay. You can really traumatize a fucking person by doing that. It's just, it's just not the way that we should be moving. That shit made me sick. I absolutely did not like to see it. The book is supposed to be like so racially aware and it's supposed to talk about the ways that this interracial couple are making it work despite the fact that he definitely does have some ignorances that he needs to work through. And don't we all? I don't have a problem with depiction of a character who has prejudice to work through. I have absolutely no problem with that. But what I don't like is when the author is like, yeah, this is the solution to them working out the issue and now they're a better person and the person is still fucking trash. Throughout the book, Drew is basically is making ignorant comments and the way that those conversations were handled did not impress me. I really did not feel like this man grew at the end of the book. It made me uncomfortable. He was still as racist at the end of the book as he was at the start and I just do not understand why everybody's panties were wet over this man. He was so basic. Nothing and also nothing about the romance did a single thing for me. My heart actually stopped beating. It was like, fuck this. I don't even want to be here no more, dude. And after that, I was just like, yo, I'm not picking up any more of her books because there just were too many issues on top of the fact that the romance was like wet paint. I just, I had no interest and it was like wet white ass paint. It was a broken eggshell. I wasn't into it. Yeah, no, thank you next. And then the book was way too goddamn long. And then there was the miscommunication. There was the fact that you had two grown ass people who just could not communicate with each other. She had insecurities, he had insecurities and assumptions. And they were trying to do this long distance relationship and make it work while not being adults and talking about their concerns, their fears, the issues that they were having between one another. And I do know, I said this like years ago and someone was like, well, because they're adults doesn't mean that they are going to be good communicators. That's true, but I don't like reading about adults who can't communicate with each other. If I wanna read shit like that, I'll read a YA book. It just doesn't impress me. Yes, that happens all the time, but I don't enjoy those kinds of stories. What I do enjoy is the introduction of conflict in the story that is not rooted in something as juvenile as a simple misunderstanding. Conflict needs to be introduced that is not rooted in two grown ass people not wanting to have conversations with each other. I just need something more from my romance. Jasmine Guillory's books are just simply not for me. Next up on this list, we have none other than Nicholas Sparks. Nicholas Sparks, I don't know where he ranks on all of the romance writers of the of America, but I'm going to guess that he's his books are at number three. I think maybe number one would be Daniel Steele, maybe Mary Higgins Clark. Does she write romance? I don't know. And then maybe Nicholas Star Sparks at number three. But I, the only one of his books that I have read was Dear John, and it was because my best friend and myself were very obsessed with this book in, or with the movie, I'm sorry, in high school. If I'm going to be honest, it's 
getting added to Netflix this month and I'm going to be watching the fuck out of it. This man puts out books the way that rats put out babies. None of them call to me. None of them are interesting. What is it that someone said years ago? They said that Nicholas Sparks' books are all about white people embracing and I was fucking weak. I was weak because that's literally it. That's literally all of the covers are middle-aged white folks staring at each other dramatically and hugging. There is nothing about these books that called to me. I need something more palatable than what is going to be an easily swallowed romance that is mass produced. And that's simply because already I don't like romance, right? I don't like romance. I don't like love for the sake of love. I already know that I'm gonna die alone. I need something a little bit more convincing. I need horror. I need gore. I need these couples to be fighting for their damn lives. Akasha, muerte. If Nicholas Sparks was to come out with a thriller horror romance, he might have a better chance, but I do not give a fuck about Carol, who is a widow, who's on the beach in her beach house mansion, and then she starts up a thing with the gardener. Kids died in a fire. They have to keep their love a secret. I just, I need more than that. Next up on this list is a famed poet, one of the most famous poets of our generation, a poet that is constantly lauded and applauded, and that is none other than Ruby Cower. Or is it Kaur? This poet is so celebrated and widely read and I always love to see brown folks thriving in their literature and in their works and in their books but Rupi's poetry <clears throat> I'm so sorry y'all it's just a little too straightforward for me the style of the poetry the simple statements that are supposed to be really profound just don't call to me very boring I'm trying to be nice the quotes that I've seen from this author i'm just like this this is this is what we're obsessed with poetry is a really deep personal and sensitive thing it can be so difficult to find a poet that speaks to you whose words crawl right into your heart and address you directly. Poetry can be difficult for me to connect to. And so there's a very specific style of poet that I enjoy, and that is simply not Ruby. If your poetry can be put on a coffee mug, I'm probably not going to like it. And that is not to say that it's not phenomenal poetry, that y'all are basic for liking it, that Ruby's a basic poet, because I don't think that's true. I think that Ruby does get a bad reputation as being like a basic poet and I think that that is also like rooted in sexism. Things that tons of girls tend to like are always labeled as basic but I simply have never enjoyed that poetry writing style and I know if I read one like a full length collection I would be throwing all of my poetry books out the window, I, it would be Burning Man, like I would go to one of those damn festivals just to burn all of my books and I'm simply not going to do it. Next up we have none other than E.L. James who gave us the abomination that was the Fifty Shades of Grey series. This was a series where it got a lot of white women in trouble. White women were ending their damn marriages over these books, okay? They were having midlife crises and they were going out, flying to different countries, and this shit was killing me. I remember when the Fifty Shades of Grey series came out, one white woman got in trouble because she was watching the, the movies in the theater and she was like using a cucumber? And I was like, damn, you that bored, huh? For real though, like how are you picking your sex toys at the vegetable aisle? <laughs> you that bored, okay. Okay, that's so wild. And then I think there was another story about a woman who like went to the hospital because she had like speared herself with a carrot. And also like, how do you choose them? Do you choose them by the ridges? Is it the firmness? inquiring minds want to know. These stories were absolutely wild and it was really interesting because I was like sitting here like y'all have never y'all didn't know about any of this huh and you just lost your damn minds and this is what I'm saying like this is what reading books by Nicholas Sparks and uh what, what's her name I already forgot uh Danielle Steele do okay because they teach women that this is this bland boring ass grits watery grits watery oatmeal ass sex 
is the only thing that there is. And then they read books like Fifty Shades of Grey and lose their fucking minds. So this is all a petition for you to stop reading books by Danielle Steele and Nicholas Sparks and read something just a little bit more spicy because goddamn. But mind you, yes, like these books came out, I think, before romances that were a little bit more dark and exploratory were popular, where kinks were explored and BDSM was explored and it was taught how to do these things safely. And so that's part of the, the issue with Fifty Shades of Grey, the consent. I mean, this book was rife with issues. There was the consent, there was the treatment of people of color. That shit was very concerning. And it was something that a lot of people missed when reading these books. And I just was like, how? Like, how did you miss that? How did you miss the racism in these books? I'm not interested in reading anything that E.L. James comes out with simply because I wasn't interested in Fifty Shades of Grey to begin with. So why the hell would I be interested in anything that this author writes in the future? Many people have spoken about how Fifty Shades of Grey did start a lot of conversations about safe sex and BDSM and consent, which is always a good thing. And yes, this was the first popular commercialized series that really explored those topics in length, that got a movie, etc. But those books existed well before E.L. James. Books about how to have kinky sexual relationships that were exciting and fun while having consent and not being racist. Let us not attribute E.L. James with starting that. E.L. James did not create BDSM. Next up, we have none other than Dan Brown. Dan Brown was another author that I thought myself to be so freaking brilliant for reading in high school. I was reading Angels and Demons, I was reading Da Vinci Code, and I thought that I was like the smartest kid in the world because I was doing it before like the movies came out and all of that fun stuff. It was my first exploration into books, like thriller books that had all these codes and cryptology and, and really wildly lengthy mysteries that were rooted in history and those were all things that I very much enjoyed. I was a big old nerd. So many people have pointed out that those books are just rife with sexism which doesn't surprise me and it doesn't surprise me that I missed out on those themes because I was a child while I was reading them. But now when I look back at those books even if you ignore the problems of how women are treated in that text the books just simply don't call to me. I realized that the writing themselves was pretty damn basic for lack of better language. And it's really interesting because you'll have white males who are kind of seen as the main ones enjoying a certain type of literature like Dan Brown, whose writing is just as basic as Danielle Steele's. I'm sorry, the only difference is that Dan Brown is a man. We have only four authors left. Pause the video, comment down below, and make a guess on one or all four of these authors that you think I am not ever, ever, ever going to read. You know me very well. You'll probably be able to guess one or two of them. Coming in at number four, we have none other than Chuck Palina, who is known for Choke as well as Fight Club. Started reading Choke, absolutely hated it, threw that book out the window, fed it to the dog, fed it to the squirrels, fed it to the wolves, absolutely not. Obviously, Fight Club is just rife with issues with the depiction of DID. Again, this is one of the most basic books that I've ever read. I do not understand the hype. His books do not call to me. To this very moment, I cannot understand why his books are so celebrated. They just don't do anything for me personally. I'm not the audience for those books. I do, let me rephrase, I do see why people enjoy those books, but I simply am just not one of them. And that's honestly like all of the tea that I have on Chuck Palahniuk. The fact that he's on so many must read lists simply baffles me. It baffles me. Number three on this list is none other than our boy James Patterson. Y'all will probably know that I made a whole dedicated video talking about James Patterson and his comments on white men being oppressed. <laughs> The comment section of that video is just one of my favorite things of all freaking time. The hate that I got on that video was absolutely hilarious. The way that so many white men showed up in droves, in droves, to defend this white man who is worth almost a billion dollars. A man who does not give a fuck about you. It was so embarrassing to watch. I was reading these comments like, imagine, imagine thinking Jimmy needs Daniel from Ohio to defend him. It's so freaking embarrassing. Like a man who would never even welcome you to his dinner table. You know what I'm saying? It's humiliating. It could never be me, but y'all do you. First of all, he doesn't even write his books. Second, you know I have a terrible relationship with commercialized thrillers, just like I have a terrible relationship with commercialized romance. Those books are so formulaic. 
they are dry they have absolutely no soul the plot twists are predictable the characters are flat there is absolutely no complexity there that i need in my thriller books i need something that is creative i need something that is out of the box i need something that i haven't read before and that's a part of the reason why these kinds of commercialized books are so popular right and there's no shame in that like if you only enjoy reading commercialized books that's fine that makes sense there are tons of people who do that's why those books are so popular people enjoy those kinds of books because they are predictable because they don't require a whole lot of thinking and unpacking because they can just be in this exciting fast-paced story and not be absolutely gutted at the end of it and not have it occupy their every waking thought it's just like watching trash tv and, and then you get to follow like these series like james patterson has the alex cross series and that series is a comfort to so many people because they know alex cross they know the, the plot line they know where the story's gonna go and then they get to watch him do new adventures and all of that makes sense so i do understand why he is so absolutely famous and beloved but he has been making problematic statements for way too goddamn long and y'all have been giving him all kinds of passes this man is a billionaire he's been writing books for nine million years he's been writing books since the dinosaurs walked the earth so you cannot tell me that he is ignorant he's not ignorant this man is extremely educated and people on twitter in articles have tried to educate him on the problematic things that he has said for years and at some point it stops being about ignorance and starts being about decisions and i have no interest in supporting an author like that i never have i never will i don't give a fuck like what he comes out with next absolutely not no who thought this was a good idea who thought this photo was a good the last two authors could be switched easily i really had a hard time trying to decide who's gonna be number one because i hate both of these women so equally coming in at number two was going to be none other than jk roachling i cannot stand this woman last year there was a scandal with owl crate when they decided to go back to selling harry potter merchandise because they wanted these specific mugs to come out and i made a video about that because the book community was very very <clears throat> not me going through puberty the book community was very very torn up about that decision and it, it sparked a lot of it reinvigorated excuse me a lot of conversations about jk roachling and her impact on trans rights her turf ass feminism just all of that i'm not even going to talk again about how okay well i get why some people like harry potter and the nostalgia and whatever because you have to remember you're talking to a black ass person nostalgia is always the fucking excuse right it's the excuse for why the confederate flag should still be waved it's the excuse for why all of these statues of of men who owned my fucking ancestors should still be up oh nostalgia oh it's nostalgia i don't give a fuck about your nostalgia at some point i just stopped caring too many crimes have been committed against marginalized people in the name of fucking nostalgia and i'm sick of it so i i just don't care i don't care people who are defending jk roachling because of their nostalgia i look at y'all and i think that you look absolutely mad how embarrassing like how embarrassing that you are choosing your nostalgia your memories over the rights of actual human beings that is humiliating imagine dying and your descendants are having to explain that their ancestor decided that this was the hill they wanted to die on it could never be me never gonna care so you can like write your little comments about it but i'm telling you i, I don't care at this point i would argue that especially if you're watching this video you already know the situation with jk rowling and you've already chosen a side you've already decided hey she's not a turf or she is a turf she hates trans people and i don't care you've already decided that you've already decided whether or not your nostalgia should overcome people's rights and ability to move through the world you've already made up your, your mind so i'm not gonna have a discussion about that i just will say i will never read one of this woman's fucking books ever i have so many things that i'm nostalgic about and none of those things are more important to me than other people's human rights and the very last author on this list is going to be none other than donna's heart Donna Tart is a perfect case study and example as to how canceling people does actual very little. It does actually very little, especially when you're talking about a white celebrated author. Donna Tart has written some of the most racist books of absolutely all time. Racist, xenophobic, just outright, just out, outright absolutely disturbing literature. I remember when I read The Goldfinch, I was crying. Like I was in tears at the way that this woman was depicting black women. I was really hurt over the way that she was depicting Latin men. That book is single-handedly the most harmful 
piece of literature I have ever read in my life. And I mean harmful to me specifically. It made me feel so fucking bad about myself. And I was humiliated. I was embarrassed that so many people in the book community were just so obsessed with her work and saying it was phenomenal. And I read it like wanting to be excited about it like everybody else. How safe can I possibly feel in this community if people are celebrating this book? How does my black Mexican ass feel safe in this community taking other people's book recommendations when y'all are out here riding and dying for a woman this fucking racist? Like it blew my mind. I was, I was shook and people were like, oh, I didn't realize how racist it was. I was like, the n-word was used so liberally and you are never ever 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 going to convince me that a white woman making money by having the n-word in her books is anything but racist and it's not raising awareness especially because it was never challenged in the text it was just a cute quirky part of this character the goldfinch also was like anti-asian as fuck and it's just so interesting because there are certain authors like james patterson that the community is like yeah yeah, yeah we're the book two community specifically is like yeah, yeah yeah we're willing to cancel him but when you write a dark academia book people are going to fall over themselves pretending not to to acknowledge the issues with with that, people are not willing to talk about the Goldfinch and also the secret history as racist texts. They are absolutely not willing because it's they they love dark academia too much. Every single time I see someone recommend those books, I'm like, okay, I know not to trust your book recommendations. I just know that I can't. I know that I absolutely can't. And it's just like a safety thing for me. It's like, okay, I know it's not safe. It's not about me like being upset with that person or thinking they're a bad person or a bad ally or whatever. It's just simply, I, I file it away and I'm like, okay, it's not safe because I know that you are not going to speak up or even, you know, or, or recognize, because sometimes we just don't see these things. But I'm like, okay, I know that these are things that you don't catch and, and or that you're not willing to warn people about them. And so therefore I can't, I can't trust you. I can still watch your videos and whatever, but I know I can't trust your book recommendations. My issue with Donna Tart and the Goldfinch is how people will recommend her books knowing damn well like knowing the criticisms knowing the criticisms having seen evidence and still not put content warnings being like hey i really love this book but just so you know black asian latin individuals have said this book is harmful for these reasons hey these people have concerns about how their ethnicity was represented in the text do you know what i'm saying they're not even willing to do that and if you're not even willing to do that when you're recommending a book that you know has actively harmed people of color even if you're a person of color yourself that shit embarrasses me i'm like mm, it just doesn't no it i don't like it i don't i don't fuck with it and every time i bring this up people will ask like oh you know i would love to know what about the goldfinch is racist i'm not going to i have a highlight on my instagram which is bow ties and books it's called Awful Books and I have screenshots and also like a little video in there kind of explaining why it's so racist and I'm just simply never ever going to be willing to relive that. You will never see me make a video where I talk about the Goldfinch and Donna Tart because that's how fucking traumatized I was. When I tell you that I cried over that book like because of just like man i just i can't i can't i'm never gonna revisit that so like don't ask me there also have been several articles written great articles written about why the goldfinch is so fucking racist so all you gotta do just google it just google it but i'm, I'm not gonna be talking about it further i think i'm definitely gonna say donna tar is my number one like most hated author author that i would never fuck with because jk rowling's books did not do that to me jk rowling's like comments and all of that did not do anything close to me with the goldfinch did comment down below and let me know what your most hated authors are authors that you're never going to read authors that you just simply do not funk with if you want to see more of my rant reviews i have a playlist in the description box down below that talks about books that wasted my time i also have a patreon where i post exclusive content for my patrons only we do reading sprints we do a book club for the top tier patrons i serve excerpts writing quotes and just tea on the book that i am writing right now we also have a monthly live party a netflix buddy watch this month the netflix buddy watch is going to be mean girls and the book that we're reading for our patreon book club is going to be emily xr pans um an arrow to the mood and i'm so excited an arrow to the moon i'm sorry i'm so excited i can't even say it right but i would absolutely love to hear are these any authors that you personally are like nope absolutely not i'm not going to read those authors and what authors do you absolutely cannot stand i also would love to know what your worst book has been of 2022 because I am making a video on that. So if you want to help me out with a future video, let me know what the worst book that you have read in 2022 was. If you're not interested in joining the Patreon at this time, I do have my social media links in the description box down below if you're interested in stalking me anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching this chaotic mess of a video and I will see you in my next one.